When we want our kids to learn something, we do three things. How do we teach our kids, especially about God? Hi, I'm Lisa, the Catholic Marathon Mom. On this channel, we are all about being the person that we were created to be. That's coming fully alive. We encourage each other on this journey to heaven. When parents wanna teach their kids something, they do three things. One, they show them. Two, they take them. And three, they get them good resources. And what do I mean by that? If you're good at cooking, if you're good at baseball, if you're good at working on cars, say you're great at canoeing, if you're good at cooking, say you're gonna make scrambled eggs, give your kids this life skill about making breakfast, <laughs> you show them how to do it, and you don't just have them sit on the other side of the counter and watch you, but the first thing you did was you showed them what you were doing, cracking the eggs, scrambling the eggs, while the pan is heating up, all of that organizing of the ingredients on the counter, then you invite them over. Hey, come over here. You scramble the eggs. Now we're doing it together. Now, then you move it on and you're like, okay, yeah, you pour the eggs into the pan and showing them safely how to use the spatula and move the scrambled eggs around. And ta-da, you have scrambled eggs. To enhance the learning, maybe you're like, hey, let's watch uh, that video on YouTube about how to make scrambled eggs. Oh, look, I found a channel. It's about kids cooking. Let's watch that. So you found them a resource. Or maybe you went to the library and you got a book about cool recipes for kids to make in the summer. You get what I'm saying, right? Like seasonally different cookbooks and things like that. You showed them what it was, you took them, you brought them into the experience and you got them resources. Well, the same thing is true about faith. The Summer Book Club is talking all about being a lifelong learner, and you can go a whole bunch of different directions on this. One of the stumbling blocks is not knowing how to share faith, so that's what I'm gonna jump into today. So in our family, when they're babies, we brave going to church. And we understand that for a few years, it's gonna be simply an act of faith. And we're gonna to go to church, we probably won't hear much of what is said, might not even get to participate as part of the community because we might be sitting in the cry room or the baby room. She touches on this in her book where she talks about preparing ourselves ahead of time, ahead of weekly mass on Sunday by just reading those three readings that they're gonna read at mass and taking some time to pray through and say, hey God, what are you trying to tell me here? And then when you get to mass, you might not be able to hear or you might be walking the baby in the cry room and you're not able to sit quietly in the pew, but your heart and mind have been engaging in these readings for a couple days or the day before. So you can feel like you are participating and that the sacrifice of when they're little and you might need to move around a little bit more is okay, because you are you have thought through and prayed through these readings already before you got to Mass that week. The point is you brought your kids to Mass. They have to see us going to Mass because if they don't see us, they won't do it. Just like if you talk to the person about how to make scrambled eggs, but you never actually make them for your kid or you never show them how to do it, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, scrambled eggs. Oh, okay. Some people eat scrambled eggs. I don't know anything about it though. A really strange jump there from mass to scrambled eggs. I know, but the idea is the same. So we bring them to mass, we bring them as babies. We bring them all through their life. And as they get a little bit older and can stay a little bit longer, some then we start adding in daily mass. As often as we can, we try to hit daily mass because Lord knows I need the graces of mass. I need the graces of Jesus in the Eucharist every day if I could. <laughs> and then we talk to them. We talk freely and openly about God. We talk about things that we feel we learned in prayer, that we felt the Lord speaking to our spirit when we read a certain scripture, or we heard at mass when the, the priest was sharing his homily, oh, this part stuck out to me. And we share it amongst my husband and myself, but also our kids. What did you guys hear? Did you, you know, what? And they might mention the song or they might mention the reading. And as they grow, the more and more that this conversation becomes a normal thing, a thing that just happens, we just talk about the Lord, they start adding in their own. And you'll be shocked what you hear comes out of these little, little souls. Their hearts are so open and they really retain what they hear much more than we do sometimes. There's another part of sharing our faith with our kids and that's us growing as well. I asked the Holy Spirit to help me and so I'm, I'm still learning and growing. But we have to help too. We have to be part of this situation and just like all the different parts of our life. Can't just think I want scrambled eggs for my kids. I gotta get up and crack those eggs and make them. 
So my husband is part of men's group and prayer group, and he's in weekly classes for uh, furthering his formation. And I'm part of mom's group where we study scripture and books, and we discuss how that pertains to our life or maybe what God is revealing in our life. I want to share a couple of those books with you. Okay, so if you haven't seen these books, they are phenomenal. I'm Elizabeth Foss. Man, you guys, take up and read. These are these books are just some of many of the books that she has written and they're amazing. The depth that they go into knowing like who we are as women. I'm just ex so excited every time a new book comes out that she has been part of the writing and editing. Um, so consider the lilies phenomenal. You guys, let me just show you real quick. They go through and they are um, reflections and then they go and they've got to ponder with your pen and you just have room to write and there's room to, to just, it, they're not really long sections to read. There's sections to doodle really good artwork and it was really great to be able to know that every two weeks we were gonna gather as a group and I didn't have to read like 30 pages to be able to be part of the conversation I could read a couple of pages pray read the scriptures she suggests and and learn how to be a good listener and also share what God was teaching please check these out they have made it very accessible for me to practice and work on memorizing scripture and we work through this whole scripture it's Colossians 3 12 through 17 and you move through that throughout this entire book and then the latest one just beautiful this is ponder oh my gosh this is going through the mysteries of the rosary and again look that's not very intimidating we could get through that book right so Oh my gosh, so wonderful to do it on your own prayerfully or to get together with a couple of girls and you can just say, hey, every two weeks, that makes it manageable with scheduling and babysitting and stuff. So that's for me as mom, me growing and then being able to share with my kids how I'm growing and things that I'm learning. And with that, it's going to sound crazy, but or maybe not so crazy to you, but did to me is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Now this is a really tiny version, um, really teeny tiny small print, but uh, you can get them in larger size and much easier to read. But oh my goodness, I had no idea about the actual teachings on some of these things about Catholicism and it's not in very complex intellectual speak. You can understand this and it's really helpful for me to, to be able to go to this as a, re a resource. That's like that number three part, the resource part. And then for more day-to-day -day things, my in-laws have gifted us subscriptions to Magnificat. Okay, I love this because it goes day-to-day -day and it goes through the mass readings. Okay, I highly recommend for kids to get them a Bible. Now this is a Bible that my daughter in middle school got and it's one that they provided through the CCD class, so we call it PSR here, Parish School of Religion. What's great about it is there's, um, you could you could put the tabs on it. There's maps, which she loves. Not a lot of pictures, which is cool because I think when you do make it a, more of a picture book, it feels too young. So for her, she really liked this. This is, she's had this um, in her middle school year. So this is a really good one. And then my son really he loves this Bible. So this is the New American Bible. It does have smaller print because it is a smaller size, but it's, it's the Old Testament and New Testament and he loves it. He is a fifth grader and he, it's a good size for him and he loves to just bring his Bible. Again, because he does watch his dad bring his Bible when we go to adoration. He brings it along with him. And so here, you know, my youngest has his own Bible. So awesome. This year our parish was handing out Bibles. Check this out. How fun is this? This is from dynamiccatholic.com. It says in the back, but it's a New Testament. And I love this. Check it out. That is so cool for anybody, guys, teens, mommies I mean I love this and it's a New Testament so pretty cool they gave it out you're telling your kids about Jesus you are saying small things and we teach them the prayers of the chaplet I have a video on that you could check out how do you pray that and then there's lots of videos you can find about how to pray rosaries and things like that but you might want some more so you are telling them about it you're bringing them to mass you bring them to holy hour in Eucharistic adoration going up to the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel, just spending time in the presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity, and the presence of 
Jesus there in the chapel. They're watching you. And um, I had a friend years ago say, you don't have to go for an hour. You can do a holy half hour or a holy 15 minutes with your kids. And I would bring some crayons and some coloring books of Our Lady or Rosary, and they would just sit quietly, but they were in front of the Lord. And so it was wonderful. So they have experienced this little by little by little, kid-sized bites, um, through their life. And then the resources. So we brought, talk to them about them. We share that Jesus loves you. Oh my gosh, so much. Oh, you know, I, we drop off our daughter at, um, Catholic summer camp and we're like, when I'm praying, I'm praying, you know, blessed mother be with her. I'm not with her right now. And to know that and be able to share that with her, she is with you. She is praying for you. I mean, how beautiful, but then you're bringing them and then the resources so I've got this stack of resources I'm gonna just run through them really quickly they're part of our homeschool curriculum and we love them I share these with you only because I love them I'm not part of any affiliation or selling them or anything but so these are called friendly defender cards they actually give answers to questions very popular questions about Catholicism but in kid size version answers it, with scripture to go along with it I'll just show you one. How can you believe a piece of bread is really Jesus? That's like the quintessential question. <laughs> Anybody gotten that question before? <laughs> and here it says the answer and then the scripture. So the answer is Jesus called himself the bread of life. And then it has the scripture, John 6, 51, where he explains, I am the living bread. So for all those who have questions, they're really seeking, they want the truth, you can share that truth. But this is kid, kid size, I mean, cool pictures. And they're made by Ascension Press. So here is the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism and it's kid version also. And very cool. There's lots of questions in there and answers and you move along through. Then we've got the Illustrated Lives of the Saints and we've had this book since our older two were little. And it goes through uh, with a picture and description of the saint's life and the date. And here is the Rosary in Art and really beautiful artwork throughout the world that um, shows, talks about the different mysteries of the rosary, which are the different parts of Jesus's life. Then very cool book, and I only bring this up because my daughter absolutely loved it. I feel like she read this in sixth grade, and it's called The Bronze Bow. It's just a um, fictional book, but it really ties in um, some Old Testament time and New Testament time. So basically, what are the three things? Again, they are to talk, share with your kids about faith, to take them with you where you're going, where you're going to a shrine, you're going to mass, you're going to adoration, and then to have resources. Hey, share with me some of your resources that are your favorites on where, how you share your faith with your kids. I have a short playlist that I'd love for you to check out. God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of the videos from the book club list in the description box below. God bless you. Bye.